Hello everyone, it is the man of stumbling speech, Roland Dell. And tonight I'm going to talk about something that is very complicated uh, and I've seen throughout my time in ministry. And Matthew uh, chapter 7 really gives 1 through 15 specifically really uh, is emphatic about this. It really makes a point and warning people about um, judging and uh, the wrong type of judging, not discernment. And um, so this is what I wanted to speak about tonight. And I'm not a gifted teacher. I'm not a gifted speaker. But perhaps, just perhaps, I can get my point across um, to what I've encountered in ministry. And I've been in ministry uh, for over 30 years. And I've been a Christian for over 40 years. And uh, I've seen this again and again. And, you know, I'm infallible. I make mistakes. But I do follow the Lord, and I do learn what he's showing me. And one of the things that I've discovered is even some of these, even this verse, the verse that I'm going to share with you tonight, I tried to share. And I thought, well, maybe I'm a little off. Maybe I'm, maybe it's not the time to share it. Um, but actually, it's coming back, I believe. Um, and I think I think there's a balance in my belief. I don't think that I get blindsided um, because, uh, for one thing, I'm not smart enough to get blindsided. I, I have to depend on the Lord to guide me and show me all the truth. A lot of people are clever enough to um, stumble themselves in their own walks because they are uh, capable um uh, people, and that's why I think the Lord uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He uses what not to confound what is because of the pride. Uh, the same thing that Satan had the pride in is his brilliance, uh, thinking that he could be God. And I think in our fallen natures, we can tend to fall into this. And I've seen many <sighs> outstanding Bible teachers and ministers. That have struggled with what I'm going to talk about tonight. So um, I'm reading off the script here. So you have to forgive me um, because it's too hard for me to remember, uh, to, uh, memorize, and, and deliver this just from uh, off the top of my head because there's so many things involved with it over um, 30 years of my life. Um, Anyway, I start off with my own testimonial. I most definitely started with my Lord in the mid-1970s as a teen. I, like some of us, which feel our, our, our fertile ground was plowed up and tested, metaphorically speaking, as the Lord knew that I was sown into the world as wheat. But then so did Satan and his angels. I think this is what happens when you come into the um the world as we and you come into the world as the lords uh you know we have a lot of tribulation in life because satan knows it too satan knows who are his and who aren't his um so then i go on even before my pro profession of faith in the lord jesus christ for my transgressions of sins unto new life satan was busy having a go at me in the spiritual world the really sad part is that my parents, who claim his name as Savior, hadn't a clue to the spiritual battles which I encountered, even right under their own roof. From actual poltergeist to my personal terror at night, complete with demonic projections and attack from under my mattress, this was all contributed to an overactive imagination by my parents, except for the fact that I was actually able to show my brother and his friend one of these supernatural events unravel before their very eyes. My brother still remembers it vividly to this day. After high school, I enlisted in the Coast Guard, went overseas aboard two Coast Guard cutters out of Honolulu, Hawaii. This was a sort of short lived, this was sort of short lived, however, due to the reduction in force. President Reagan enforced to all non-DOD agencies at that time. Most of, most of the people who were involved in this cutback 
either had very little time in or were discharged at the convenience of the government. We used to call the sick, lame, and lazy. Uh, I had missed my A school, which I was, I, was a, I was a striker in engineering because I don't have the kind of mind that memorizes stuff and all I, I learned by doing. So I thought I'd become an engineer by doing. Um, but I missed my school, and that was largely because of a chief uh, intending to undermine my performance at every uh, crook and turn. Um, one of the reasons was he had a sleeping disorder, and uh, I tried to get him up. I couldn't get him up, and he blamed me for uh, it. was one of those personal things we all go through. And then back then, a lot of them were drunks also and had control over who they fancied over one another, and sometimes without good reason. So, you know, we all see that kind of thing where um, somebody in leadership uh, uh, likes somebody better than somebody else, and that's... Uh, yeah, that's natural, but, you know, we as believers, we know that the Lord uh, has control of our lives. Uh, I felt that was my case anyway, that this guy was being unfair. And after getting my Merchant Marine Z card, I set out once again to prove myself worthy within the world, and did so by submitting a letter of recommendation from people like naval officers who thought my seagoing work exemplary. During that time, I also served in street ministry, Fellowship Home Ministries under Dr. Gross was his name, street ministry at night, and even was trained up by one of Baltimore City's top Bible scholars and exorcists. That was Dr. Gross, the late Dr. Gross, rest his soul. Uh, boy, did I learn and see things which most people only read about. That's true, things that would curl your hair. Uh, I was very blessed to have been, to have learned how to operate in the spirit of truth, even when encountering demonic battles within hot spots in Baltimore City. And one of these hot spots, um, interesting enough, my mother was in, and she saw demonic activity. And then later, I was in the same place, the same apartment building, and I even had a picture of my mom outside there. But this was this was this had transient demons in it. Uh, then I got, let me go on here. Learning how to remain in prayer sometimes all night before I could get some sleep. Uh, these things would test me. Uh, you know, they made clapping noises. And, and uh, uh, there, there was, um, I don't want to go into the, the, all the details of the, of the spiritual world, but believe me, it was, uh, it was not a very restful place. And I had to, I had to do battle. Uh, because the spiritual world is a really real, real place. It really is a real place. But I suspect if you are not a threat to Satan, he simply leaves you alone. That's what I think. Because, Or maybe you're just not the Lord's to begin with. And the reason I say that is because if you're not born uh, so to the world as wheat, if you're not elect of God towards salvation, um, you're a child of the devil. You're a child of your natural father, Adam. You haven't been born again into uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and the atonement on the cross for your sins. And it's, and it's sins is remission of sins that we're going to, not to save our sinful backsides from the lake of fire, but to transform us into Christ's likeness because of sin. That's what salvation's about. And a lot of people um, seem to forget that. Uh, it, it almost becomes like a, a sales pitch to be a Christian a day, but actually it's sin. We have to be we have to be transformed out of sin, out of our sin natures and sin. Okay, let me get back to reading. A problem come uh, uh, one problem comes in at this point. Now I was talking about um, uh, Satan, Satan bothering you and um, and walk and learn how to walk in the spirit, becoming spiritual men. Uh, a pr that's what I'm saying. A problem comes at this point. Yes, we are told to discern who are our brothers, as in 1 John chapter 4. Yet, we must be careful not to overstep our discernment into the wrong type of judging. This is funny because, like I said, I tried to interject this before with one of the fellowships I was with. The biggest problem which I have discovered is that the brethren who have tasted of the love of the Lord and the supernatural occurrences experienced by more mature men of God often go hand in hand 
um, with overstepping one ability to understand and speak to such issues. In other words, elders that have a lot of experience with these things in the spiritual world, they have a lot of experience, personal experience with the Lord Jesus Christ and their walks, and they're good Bible scholars, they can become a little heady in their, um, in their understanding and their belief systems. This is the same thing the scribes and Pharisees did. They were studied men. They wanted respect to men. Uh, but again, the Bible speaks about the lowly in heart, that God uses the lowly in heart to, to, um, to um, God, forgive me, the lowly in heart to, I don't know, it amazes the people that are, that are gifted, uh, naturally gifted, because they know, they know the lowly and, and the ones that speak well, uh, they, it can't be them doing it. So God's glorified through this. Um, but the problem is, um, and I think the reason the Lord does this is because if we are capable in and of ourselves, um, kind of like Satan was so brilliant that we tend in our fallen natures to think that we have a handle on things maybe more so than we actually do. And let me get on to reading here. Um <clears throat> In other words, you can become so entrenched within your personal belief system that instead of helping the Lord's people, you actually can stumble them, or worse, tear down their faith. This is ha this happened to me in the church where they said they didn't see me as a minister, or maybe I'm not. But um, but they you know they threw the baby out with the bathwater. They didn't want to hear what I had to say. Uh, I, and I have seen this many times. Um, within my life, and mostly within the most gifted among us, the, be the best pastors, the, the people that have the most on the ball. I think without realizing it, most fall into the sin of spiritual pride, especially in the pursuance of the narrow way which leads to spiritual life. Uh, as the Lord ordain oh, ordains, it leads to spiritual life as the Lord ordains. Yet it is not the place of the elder to decide, uh, and this is this is um, this is one of the problems with like lordship salvation, where you're you're um, you're be you know I'll be daggone I'm getting in the narrow way and I'm not going to look at things of the world uh, because that's sinful. I'm only going to look at the Lord. I'm only going to look super you know, hyper spiritually. I, I don't know. It's a belief system that the, a lot of people um, in different forms have convinced themselves that they're in and they're on and that they can they can uh, uh, then judge others because uh, they're so um, far ahead of everybody else. And this is where I want to get into actually reading over Matthew 7, 1 through 15. Um, and, and like I said, it is um, Matthew 7, 1 through 15 is emphatic about um, about this teaching. That's why it goes into such detail. So I want to uh, continue with that. So I'm going to read this, uh, Matthew uh, 7, 1 through 15. I'm going to point out some things that I see. Um, okay, there we go. Pull it up here. Uh, judging others. Seven, judge not that you not be judged. For without judgment, you pronounce you will be judged. And without measure, you will use it. You will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck in your brother's eye, but not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Now, this is talking about brethren, actual brethren, people that are filled with the Spirit of God. And it's in a particular order here. And then 6 goes on, Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and attack you. Now, to me... 
that's like don't share the things of God, the, the more supernatural things of God that you've seen with people that aren't the Lord's uh, uh, being pigs and dogs. In other words, you don't share your wisdom in the Lord Jesus Christ or the things you've seen in the Lord Jesus Christ with people that uh, are going to turn and attack you and render you with it. Ask and it will be given is seven. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. Let's talk about the heart. And to the one who knocks it will be opened. Or which one of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to do good, uh, good, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Absolutely. And then we all remember this from school, the golden rule. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also unto them, for this is the law of the prophets. And I'd like to interject at this point. So if you don't want to be, um, if you don't want to be judged at, uh, too harshly, which is, what seven's talking about here, uh, then be careful how you how you go about judging other people, and especially if if you're um, if you're I don't know mature and gifted and you've had any time with the Lord because I think there's a thing that uh, can develop and I I actually made a, um I actually made a a, a little um, sticker up about it on the internet, and it's called confirmation bias, seeking information that matches your beliefs. It's also known as cognitive bias, is a mistake in reasoning, okay, evaluating, remembering, or cognitive process, often occurring as a result of holding onto one's preferences and beliefs regardless of contrary information. These are people that are so steeped in their belief system that they've gone off the rails. It says psychologists study cognitive biases as they relate to memory, reasoning, and decision making. Now, I want to throw that in here because this is what I think happens with a lot of men of God, a lot of leaders in fellowships, and even cult leaders. They are steeped in their beliefs, and it doesn't matter how much you say. Uh, especially to them or their followers, you're not going to change their perception because their mind is made up, basically. So, back to the golden rule. So, whatever you would wish to others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law of the prophets. Now, there's also a thing called uh, lordship salvation, where you're so concerned with being on the narrow way and following the Lord Jesus Christ that you want to throw out anything in the world, anything that distracts you from the Lord Jesus Christ. But the problem is, this Lordship salvation thing is another systematic type of theology. And they don't realize, a lot of times, they don't realize that they're, um, they've are they put a prescriptive religion into actually just abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ and moving in simple faith and humility. And humility, I want to say, because this takes, this pride sneaks in and you become a judge, juror, and uh, an executioner of other brethren. And I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I've seen this many a times, like I said before, within ministry. Okay, so now we get down to 13. And, and this is, this is in, in the proper order. Now we get down to 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide that, and way is easy that leads to destruction. That's loving things of the world. And those who ent enter by it are many. And few enter by the narrow gate, if you remember. The disciples said, Jesus, Master, there are few to be saved. And he said, enter in the narrow gate. So 14 says, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Now, this is in the ESV. You have to forgive me, you, um, yeah, you uh, King James people. Um, but the same truth is here, uh, um, and, and many of them find that are few. So this is this is a danger. This is a danger 
that you get so over focused, let's say over focused, that you actually become blindsided to what you're doing. Um, and uh, I see this happen a lot. Uh, a tree and its fruit. Beware of false prophets. Now, isn't this interesting that 15 says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. In other words, men of God. They claim to be men of God, but inwardly are ravenous wolves because <laughs> um, they want you to believe them. They want you to follow them. And the amazing thing is I know people that say, and, and, and I'm sure the guy, I know the guy's a brother. I know the guy's a brother. And, and I don't know how to say this um, without just coming straight out and saying it. But it's, it's great to say that you, you don't do accusations, that you, you don't do um, politics, you don't do, uh, you don't do conservative Christian church things any more than you do liberation theology, um, which I happen to write a little note to somebody about. And they say, oh, I don't do either one of those things. Oh, no, that wouldn't be godly. And, and, and sick offenses, you know, bootlickers, that, that wouldn't be godly either because then they'd be following me and not Jesus. But the guy doesn't understand. The guy doesn't see. The guy's become blindsided that, uh, that actually um, he's, he's deceiving himself. He's deceiving himself in his, own, in his own wisdom, in his own growth, in his own, I don't know, zeal to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And no matter what I say, he he won't be humbled enough. He he will not see, like I just said, in um, in with um, confirmation by seeking information that matches your beliefs. He will not hear anything different than what he believes, and it's very sad. It's very sad. Uh, and um, I don't know. I, I I don't I don't know. I hope I'm making myself clear. But I but I've seen this all the time. I've seen this all the time. And it goes with Matthew 7, 1 through 15. And judging others. Remember, judging others. Matthew 7. Judge not, not be judged. Okay? Now, that doesn't say that you shouldn't discern who your brother in Christ is, 1 John chapter 4. But it says, be careful how you judge, is what it's saying. And then the narrow gate is all the way down in chapter 13 for the gate is narrow and all so so in this lordship salvation they're worried about uh the gate being narrow and they're going to follow the, the narrow way and they're not going to do anything in the world and what what happens is like with myself you get thrown under the bus you get hot daggers stuck in your back because all of a sudden you may not agree with um with their view of the world or their view of what they're doing. In other words, you're presenting another reality which they don't want to see. So then rather than seeing that maybe they're uh, misleading people or they're, or they're actually people are following them instead of Jesus Christ, which is what they don't want to happen, when you point out to them that this may indeed be happening, they, uh, they mark you as, as a backslider, a, a false brethren. And this is the problem with, lordship salvation thing and it all gets down to matthew 7 1 through 15 so me read matthew 7 1 through 15 and read it in the order that it is given because it's important the scriptures is given in this order for a reason and the false prophets being the end of it the ones in sheep's clothing is there for a reason because the bible is warning this this is all our natures and we can all uh fall fall prey to it and, um, you know, I'm not the best speaker, I'm not the, the best teacher, but, um, but my, my spiritual discernment in following the Lord Jesus Christ, not men, has, has not been dulled, has not been dulled at all. I might not be able to put it over, but for the ones that are willing um, to see what I'm, see what I'm saying here, um, a lot of people fall into, I don't know, it's almost like, it's almost like a Messiah complex, or, or what the pro, what the uh, Pharisees uh, fell into, and it's amazing because these people, like for Benny Hinn, for instance, Benny Hinn talks about walking in the Spirit, and, and I can go into a little bit of my expertise here. Uh, demons do not have 
you don't get an electromagnetic uh, uh, your your hair standing on ends and, and all that if the Lord's touching you. That is a demonic sign. A lot of these things you watch on Benny Hinn are demonic um, episodes. These are demonic forces that these people are feeling. They're not the Lord's uh, feeling. The Lord is very. The Lord's not a, a big angel light. He's not a showman. Um, he when, when healings, for instance, if you've ever been healed, uh, Doctor Gross, I had my back healed years ago, and so if you ever been healed, the the heal, the hands always get warm. It's warm to the touch. It's it's you're led to do it. You're led to lay your hands on somebody. And I had my back healed, and he put and the pastor put his hands on me, um, and his hands were warm, and they got. And, and, and it felt like this stiffness came right out of my back. And he said, feel my hands, feel my hands, feel how warm they are. Okay. Well, there's counterfeits to that. There's demonic healings where your hands are cold. Demonic things are cold to the touch, but people are deceived and you have false teachers claiming to be of God, which are actually demonic um, influences. And the problem is that if you um, get off base, Biblically, if you, oh, I don't know, if you don't have a balance in your scripture, in your scriptural understanding, um, then that then that scripture use can actually become demonic. Dr. Gross used to say the most powerful form of witchcraft was Hebrew-style witchcraft because it uses the Bible. So you have to be very careful, even when you're teaching things in the Bible, to be very careful that it's in context and that you are not deceiving other people, or you're not indeed being deceived. And that's why you should have um, brethren that you can speak to, elders, men of God you can speak to and bounce things off of. But the problem is, if you get so heady in your own beliefs, you know so much that you won't hear another elder, another brother uh, uh, um, say, listen, brother, I, I think you're getting off in this area or that, or you won't hear it, then, then, then you're in trouble. You're in trouble because you won't listen to others. And you know what? Um, the only reason I haven't listened to others, um, like when they were telling me about like Lordship Salvation thing, is because I did I couldn't see yet where um, the slippery slope was. But now that I do, um, you know, I can be corrected. I'm not infallible. The Lord can correct me, and that's that's why I'm doing this uh, video today. So um, just remember Matthew seven. 1 through 15, uh, judging others, and then um, the golden rule and the narrow way, it's in context, and it's in context for a reason. And we're in the uh, time of strong delusions, and I think if, if it were possible, even, even the elect could be deceived. Even the children of God could be deceived, if it were possible. Uh, well, it's not possible if, if you continue to walk in the Lord, but if you um, have... Um, if you're so, I don't know, tied in knots with your own beliefs that you can't see past it, then, then you're in trouble. And it takes some humility to do that. God bless you, and I hope uh, this video wasn't too long. Bye-bye.